A few months ago, if you told me that AI could help me revive lost deals, draft the follow-up emails on its own, monitor which clients that we might lose, repurposed all my content, found SEO opportunities, and built a entire go-to-market strategy on its own, I would say that you're out of your mind. Because the reality is, I can't code. I never have been able to. But I'm going to show you exactly how I use cloud code. Yes, me, who doesn't know how to code. I'm going to show you what's possible and what's actually happening right now. So number one is the deal reviver. This is the money maker. This will help you find lost money. So imagine all the deals that you've lost for whatever reason, you know, maybe the customer wasn't ready to do a deal at the time. Maybe they went with somebody else. Maybe priority shifted. You never know. Timing changes, but people also have short memories too. So they forget what the deal reviver does is you can see here in my Slack instance, it will resurface deals that we lost. So you can see this deal over here, 750 grand deal that we lost, let's say 43 months ago. Okay. Or this, this other one over here, 300 grand that we lost 60 months ago okay or this other one over here 420 grand we lost 10 months ago um and there's reasoning for all this too right i can literally hit send email this is my slack instance and you can see an email drafted over here and, and you can see it says hey jason saw the recent news congrats it's been about 43 months since we connected given what's happening at your company wanted to see if it makes sense to reconnect open to a quick call right and what ends up happening is these if this person's still there then Oftentimes they 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 need help. My, my company is is a tech enabled services business. It's a marketing agency, and we have the software side too, right? But they're oftentimes looking for help. And so this is an example of an iteration that we built that that plugs into Slack. But it didn't take me that long to build this. And the beautiful part about this is that it might have taken me I don't know two three hours to get this going. But the, the next iterations of this are going to compound on top of it, where I can select a bunch. I can have a much bigger view as well. Now we can even change the dates on it. Eventually we'll set this to you know have it be more automated. But right now you. you you're basically there. You still want the human in the loop to kind of draft it, right? So our, our philosophy on this stuff right now is AI does the work, humans review. And in this case, AI has done most of the work here and we're good. But the other thing that you're going to have to do is as you continue to, to compound this is that you're going to want to have tracking where you can see the usage of this and see if you're actually winning these these, these deals, right? For us on the sales side, you can see if we want the deal, we, we know it was resurfaced through through AI, through the deal reviver, but you're going to want to have that tracking over time. Now, this is really exciting because for someone that doesn't know how to code like myself, again, I now have the ability Ability to build products and these products will compound over time because I'm going to continue to work on them. One of my friends was, was texting me the, this this morning and he was like, dude, I, I wish I could just work on this all day. I, I wish like everything else gets in my way. I just want to work on this all day. This just goes to show you the possibility of using something like a Claude code to build out a tool like this deal reviver over here. And I'm showing you in real person. This is this is reality. Didn't need to get help to do this. So the impact of this deal reviver is that deals that we would have never touched again are getting re-engaged. And that's something that would have required a dedicated person, even a dedicated person, they're going to forget and they have higher priorities. That is massive for us because the deal size that we have, some of them could be potentially, we're talking, you know, seven figures, eight figures or so, right? Down the road. And then the types of leads that we're getting now because of the AEO work that we're doing would be companies like a Dior, for example, or a Procter & Gamble. And you build all of this, that, that lead flow comes from systems that you build. What I'm showing you right now, this sales operations or this deal reviver, that is a system. So the more you understand systems, the more you understand how to use stuff like this, the more you're going to be able to compound your business a lot faster. And a little bonus for you, this actually has memory. So it's going to know over time the deals that you're rejecting versus the ones that you are, the ones that you're taking. And so you don't have to keep going back in time and you know sifting through what seems like a brand new list every single time. But finding lost deals is just one thing. What about understanding why deals close in the first place? So number two is deal analysis using your CRM. So we use HubSpot and the call recorder tool that you have. We use Gong. So there's a handful of different tools for, for either of these. And we use MCPs, which are the model context protocols. Now that sounds confusing, but MCPs just allow your different tools to talk with these different LLMs and you can use natural language to prompt it with questions. And so if I wanted to ask it questions about all deals that I want in HubSpot and what prospects said or what their objections were over time, I can see that. I can also look at all one deals that are still having calls happening in Gong. I can see how those customers are behaving over time and how the, 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 the sentiment of that client is going, right? So in this context, when I talk about deal analysis, I'm talking about the fact that when we close deals, a lot of times we actually don't know what's working. And so, you know, the salesperson might say this is working, but we don't understand what's actually working. And so we used to have to manually pull reports, listen to calls and, and guess at patterns. But by simply connecting your MCPs within Cursor, which I'm going to show you in a second, you're, you're accessing a data analyst. It might've taken you days or weeks to get this data before, or even a handful of other meetings to get this. But imagine being able to query this data. That means that you're going to be able to make a lot of decisions faster, right? Now we're inside of Cursor and you can see the questions that I asked to the HubSpot and the Gong MCP. And you can see here, I can tell what people are looking for. So based on deal patterns, people are looking for AI SEO stuff. So AEO, SEO, you know, some of our top deals are still a lot of people 
are looking for that right now on the single grain side. Paid media management, we're helping people with that. Pure SEO as well. So a lot of the work we do is around paid media and SEO. Um, you can see the type of decision makers we might go after. And so I can continue to ask questions to this thing, asking about different, maybe what some of the messaging that I should be considering to use with my, with my marketing. What are the titles we should be going after? You can see the company size too. So this allows us to hone in and make better decisions faster. And that's the point of showing you this because you now have a data analyst that you can query whatever you want on and you can also match this with your goals. This isn't even something that you need to necessarily build using Claude code. I'm just saying you're, you're going into cursor and you're you're plugging in the MCPs. And for me in this case, I'm just using you know Opus 4.5. So this is, I would say, even less technical than the first one and anybody can do this. Quick break. If you're doing AI SEO or content marketing in general, you know what the problem is. The problem is you're spending hours writing yourself or you're paying agencies lots and lots of money and you're getting AI slop that sounds just like everyone else. That's why we built ClickFlow. ClickFlow creates production grade content that actually sounds like you. Plus it helps you with other areas such as building internal links, creating FAQs and more. One customer even reported saving 90 plus hours a month just by using ClickFlow. You can get a 14 day free trial just by going to clickflow.com. No more AI slop, just production grade content that drives traffic and conversions. Back to the show. So another thing that we built that you can see here is we have built a stalled deal tracker. And so what the stalled deal tracker looks at is if there's been no activity for deals that are in progress right now in the last 21 days or so, we just simply get a notification here and you can hit act now or later. And you can, you know, click this button over here to view all deals in HubSpot. So, you know, for the stalled ones right now that aren't moving, and I think this is actually inaccurate right now, you can surface this front and center and you can see if people are acting on this or not. So the ability to build this and then continue to compound on it, your, your team can look at it, they can say, hey, this isn't accurate right now, here's how we should fix it. The point is, whatever you're building right now is, is gonna be the worst version ever, but it's going to continue to get better over time and you're going to care more because it's your company and it is ultimately your product. You're going to, you're going to pay attention with more tender loving care. In essence, you're, you're building an agentic stack for your company based on whatever your goals are. And Cloud Code allows you to do this because once you go into Cloud Code, you say, hey, here's what my goals are. Here's what I'm trying to build right now. I would like to plug this into my Slack. I want this to pull from my HubSpot data. I want this to pull from Gong as well. I want you to ingest content from here, do that. It's basically plugging in a bunch of different you know, APIs. Cloud Code will tell you exactly what you need to do. Hey, you need to set up this GitHub account over here. Hey, you might need to open up a Google Cloud you know, profile over here. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. And you're just kind of you know, looking at it and you're approving, you're disapproving things. You're setting things up. Guys, keep this in mind. If you can build tools like this right now, the tools are going to get way better. And in Claude Code, this is just the very beginning. It's going to get way better over time. And again, this to me is money that otherwise would have been lost. And if you're keeping this front and center, if you have a good manager that can just stay on top of this, that's going to be good. And, and one thing I want to flag too, you can build all these tools all day, these alerts. You also have to make sure that your team is bought in on this because if they're they're not bought in, they're not following up on these things, a lot of this is just theater. So just make sure you're doing that as well. So the content repurposing tool that we have, here's the deal. I spend a lot of time creating content and having to repurpose content is tedious. I don't even want to think about it because most of my time, the vast majority of my time is spent on operating my business. This content repurposing tool, what it does is it will ingest my YouTube content, it will ingest my podcast content. Not only that, it will ingest my gong content. So maybe sales calls I've done or calls I've done for the week. It will also ingest granola. So granola has all of my notes, all the meetings that I'm in, all the stuff that I'm, I'm saying, it will ingest from it. And so the processing pipeline you can see over here, and by the way, I just use natural language to build this out and then it just chooses what to connect. And so it scans the last seven days of content from all sources. Claude analyzes each piece for topics, insights, quotes, frameworks, and then there's viral scoring one through 100. There's counter positioning. And all I do is I, I just type down here and when I wanted to plan, I can, you know, there's, there's actually a little, a plan button, a plan mode button down here where you can plan out what it wants to build for you. And that's super high leverage. Um, and counter positioning identifies contrarian takes. And then so, you know, for X, for LinkedIn, short form, and it also has my best performing content. So it knows how I like to write. And this workflow runs every Saturday at 8 a.m. And it gives me weekly content ideas that I can pick and then I can decide what I want to write. Uh, and then I'll deliver it to my email and I'll also deliver to Slack as well. And I can manually trigger this whenever I want as well. So I just asked for an example. And so look, Eric's authentic toad is encoded, direct contrarian, specific numbers, arrow bullets, minimal emojis and standardized CTAs pointing to leveling up newsletter. Um, so this one over here, okay. This one, I gave it, I think I gave it one of my videos. And so it's, here's a $100 million SEO strategy, podcast, multi-platform content. Here's a viral score over here. Here's a core message. Here's a thread, LinkedIn posts and all that. It actually gives you something that, that's a lot more complete than this, the, the, the full output. Actually, let's just click on it. Okay, yeah, here's what the full output looks like. And I won't say this is the best. There probably needs to be more fine tuning, but 
just imagine that all the meetings that you're having now, you're just going to get this auto outputted to you. How much, how high leverage is that? Because once it gives you a good idea, oftentimes as a creator, you just need a good idea and you can run with it. And so here you have a Twitter thread. Here's it's basically, it looks like it's a collection of six tweets. And here's a LinkedIn post over here. Google SEO isn't dead, but if you're only optimizing for Google and SEO, you're already behind. Here's what I'm seeing happen for this. The game has changed, blah, blah, blah. I would, I think the language is maybe like, I don't know, 85, 90% there. I just need to make the last 10 to 15%. And look at the, the short form scripts, long form scripts. There's all these things. So one piece of content can spawn into a bunch and it does a lot of the work. Oftentimes it's just the idea. I would say that the, the, when, when I have this granola connector, which is a note taker, when it's listening to all my calls, oftentimes the meetings that you're in, you're going to have some of the best ideas in there when you're not thinking about having to make content. And that's why this content repurposer is so valuable. And I didn't need to pick a new tool to do this. I just ingest a couple things that I'm using already and I'm good to go. The next one I want to show you is the ability to find search and content opportunities, more so find opportunities to grow your traffic and grow your conversions. Okay. AEO, SEO is still relevant in today's day and age, but it isn't a set and forget it type of thing. And so we have this hooked in with my Google search console and you can show, show me like, like position gains on our SEO agency page. We, we got 95 positions. It's position five right now. Content repurposing agency. We gained 92 positions positions number eight top converting pages reddit marketing agency um you know these are some of our the, the, the pages that we have right and momentum add more internal links for this one so not only is it surfacing insights it's also recommending things to do eventually what i can do is i can have it tag people i can have it make project assignments and then someone can be on top of it right the potential for fixing these and this is not exactly right over here um because our conversions are worth more but at least you're getting a sense for for how this works you can you can mess with claude code and ask it to change up what the value of a conversion is and all that type of stuff right and it even made recommendations down here like you should be thinking about bofu content to attack um for for click flow as an example and so this is the work of what an seo analyst would do and our seos are mostly focused on on client work and so if i can have this on autopilot and then i can surface this to the internal seo team that's working on this then that's not something i need to think about all the time and so if we can create more pages because i'll give you one example we had one programmatic seo page that added about it added a customer that gave us um i think it was driving uh, you know 30 or 40 grand a month or something like that so you know not, not not a bad customer for us to drive from a programmatic seo page so that is something that you can do and you can do it with cloud code so we have another one here called the client churn risk and expansion monitor. So we want to look for when clients are saying things such as they're frustrated or disappointed or we're not proactive enough or whatever it is. We want to address that obviously quickly so we can address churn, right? Because churn is a, you know, it's a silent killer of, of companies. But we also look for expansion opportunities. If the client's really happy and they're talking about other channels that they want to attack, okay, we're going to, we're going to flag that and we're going to recommend what we should potentially be doing there. So one, you're going to get the insights, you're going to get the recommendations, but we need people to do these things, right? And so you can see it's actually pulling from these, these, this call, like, you know, the, the CMO question of this is effed up or are we doing something wrong or should we, is there wood to chop? You know, we're not seeing this convert at a high level. And, you know, we actually found out from this that this is actually missing a lot of context. And so you can use Claude code to pull not just from one call, but from a bunch of calls just with this client and understand how the context has been changing over time. Um, here's the immediate actions over here. Um, and then, you know, current, current account spend, all these things are over here. And then here's the churn probability. Here's what we need to do exactly, right? So again, you get the insights, you get the re recommendations, and then you just need someone to, 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 to get on top of it. And then that's going to prevent churn. It's also going to expand customers for you as well. So now I got to show you the go-to-market strategy that literally it did 95% of the work. I didn't really need to touch any of it. And I just basically answer questions for 10, 15 minutes or so. I, I asked it to make a go to market strategy. It understood my goals. And this is a launch that we're doing for ClickFlow. I'm just going to show you an onboarding email sequence that we have over here. Okay. So if you see the left side over here, there's a, there's email sequences, onboarding, abandoned sign up, trial canceled, um, churn customer, ongoing value, cross sell, upsell managed services. There's analytics, uh, tagging, there's, um, you know, ad scripts for YouTube and podcasts. There's outbound emails, there's pre-sale. There's a readme document as well to tell you how all this stuff works. Um, maybe I just click this. So ClickFlow Single Range Tech Enable Services product. Here's how it works. Here's the funnel architecture over here. This is for our new demand gen person coming in. Here's how the entire funnel works. Um, but you look at the email copy here, okay? Welcome to ClickFlow. Here's how you get started. Welcome to ClickFlow. You've got 14 days to see if this is the right fit for you. Here's how to make the most of it. Connect your website via Google Search Console. Generate your first piece of content. Review and publish. Get started over here. And so... I reviewed all of these emails and I made, maybe need to adjust 5% of it, but then I've, I've gone through onboarding, abandoned sign up, trial cancel. I'm going to go through these other ones and then just send it over to, to my team. And then we can, we can get these, um, these emails out there, right? Because this is, this is very much a, just a starting point for this new product. And so that's why I'm being very thoughtful about how we're, we're trying to, you know, go to market here. Um, and so this will help single grain. This will help, you know, all the other stuff we're doing as a company, but we got to make sure we do it right. But the fact of the matter is I would have paid tens of thousands of dollars for this go to market strategy. It would have taken 
taken me probably weeks, a bunch of phone calls, things like that. But I, I don't need to do that anymore. And so this is the power of having Claude code in your hands. You, you have godlike powers in your hands now. If you take advantage of it right now, you're going to be way ahead of, of other people. And this previously wasn't possible. So again, I don't know how to code. You don't need to either. But you need to be willing to, to experiment. You got to be willing to be consistent with the stuff. And what I would say is the most practical stuff you can do moving forward is just go to X, follow, just use Grok on X and just say, hey, who are all the people I should be following for for Claude Code? And then you'll find all those people, look at what they're saying, look at the videos people are sharing um, that, that go on YouTube and just experiment. Because I can tell you to go check out this course, do sign up for this, that. That is theater. The actual work is doing it. Learning how to do by doing is going to get you a lot further. And that's what I would say. That's how I learned this stuff. And I'm, I'm going to say maybe take a week out of each day to learn this. And eventually you're going to get so addicted that you're going to want to do more and more. And I would just say that this is the very beginning right now. This is the ability for you to build whatever you want. You don't need permission. Just start building. And the final thing I'll say is if you enjoyed this video, you can check out this next one over here on more examples on how we're using Claude Code to grow faster.